Hello everyone and welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name's Michael and I'm bitten by a radioactive book. Wow, November kind of flew by and we're already at an end. Or we're already in December when you're seeing this. For me it's uh, still November 13th where I'm recording it. It's time to make my November wrap up and talk to you about the books I've read this month. As you might remember, I had a very ambitious TBR of 15 books that didn't turn out at all, because in the second half of the month I was caught by the uh, infectious uh, return of World of Warcraft um, with the new add-on, so I played a huge amount of the time I would normally have spent reading, and only like towards the end of the month I, uh, I kind of found a solution of uh, doing a lot of audio books or getting uh, many of the books I have planned uh, throughout uh, the rest of the year as an audio book uh, via WhisperSync to, um, yeah, to listen to it while playing. So I'm a bit back on track now, but overall I didn't manage to read like 15 books, I read like 7, which is uh, really good as well. In a normal month I, I do like maybe 3, 4, 5, so 7 is still a good number. And yeah, let's let's get into those. Um, the month started really really strong. I read The Three Body Problem by Qi Jing Lu. It's a very successful science fiction series from China that is now translated into English for the first time. Um, I really, really enjoyed this book. It had a lot of, yeah, kind of meta um, things going on and there were a lot of things you could get out of the book via analysis and interpretation. It had a lot of very interesting themes. If you are interested in this book and haven't uh, seen it, I have a review um, of it um, uh, that uh, went up at the beginning of the month on my channel and I was also part of a live show discussion about the book on Nicole's channel, on Nicole's Adventures in SFF. Uh, so the beginning of the month yeah, was really dedicated to the three-body problem and a book I really enjoyed and awarded five stars. The month remained very strong because I read the Six Gun Tarot. This was a pick of the Dragons and Jetpacks group on Goodreads I'm co-moderating uh, with and I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I, I always had thought it would be a, a good book because uh, it uh, is a mix up uh, yeah, of, of Weird West so it's steampunk with supernatural elements set in the, in the Wild West scenario and that sounded fascinating but I was surprised how much I actually enjoyed this book and I also awarded five stars. Um, this was a really really great read with great characters and I also have a more in-depth review video of it on my channel so if you want to know more about it uh, please check it out and I hope I'm getting to read the Shotgun Akana, the sequel to the th Six Gun Tarot in December. Next up we have Tomes of the Undergates by Sam Sykes. I heard like mixed voices uh, about it um, and I have to admit that I fall into the category of the people who didn't like it that much. It's kind of serious but also a kind of parody. Uh, it's not a straight up parody so it's not like if you're reading a Discworld book therefore it's uh, the, the story is, is more serious. Um, and there's also like a lot of violence in it and a lot of fighting and action and a huge of amount of time is spent with the banter the characters have with, with each other. And normally that is a good thing uh, in my book, but here it kind of dragged the story down. The jokes were not that strong 
and for me to really enjoy them so it became kind of annoying and in the end there for a book that is somewhere between 600 and 700 pages nothing really happened there uh, there is like a a huge fighting theme in the beginning where the group of misfits that is tasked with protecting um, a high priest is on a ship with this high priest and uh, yeah the, the ship is attacked by pirates and so like the first 200 or 250 pages are just spanned in one giant battle against the pirates where the characters are introduced and later on um, some developments come out of this battle and they have to go to an island and get an object there and that's it. For me it was really really long winded and so I ended up and just gave it two stars and now my motivation to read the uh, second and third book and then get to the book that I actually wanted to review is yeah, kind of dumped down as well. Uh, so I will probably do this more like next year than this year and um, but, but I heard that his writing pro really progresses and that you can see that kind of development as a writer throughout his books so I'm yeah uh, I'm not giving up on the series even though I uh, wasn't that fond of the first installment. Next up I finished Arena Mode by Blake Northcott, which uh, is a book you can sum up with the um, catchy premise of the Hunger Games meets superheroes or uh, Hunger Games with superheroes. Um, it's about uh, Matthew Moxon who has like a brain tumor and needs some money very very desperately and so he kind of tricks his way into a tournament where superhumans battle each other for a large sum of money and he's actually not a superhuman so he has kind of yeah the impossible seeming task to survive um, yeah this kind of battle with the superhuman beings and um, I overall really enjoyed this book I have a review of it up on my channel and I awarded it four stars. Next up we have another book I have an in-depth review up on my channel uh, which I did last Monday. It's Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. Normally the Sanderson books uh, yeah, kind of um, move between 3.5 and 4.5 books uh, for me and um, especially the first standalones uh, are supposed to be not his best works and in Elantris I found that to be true and I only awarded it like three stars um, but I really enjoyed Warbreaker and gave it four stars in the end uh, and it has one of maybe my um, yeah most favorite characters this year with the god Light Song who's a very uh, funny character because he isn't really believing in himself that is um, yeah really hilarious and I overall enjoyed this book uh, much more than I had thought I would. So moving towards the end of the month uh, my month kind of fizzled out a bit in the quality of the books I've read. Um, the last two books I finished uh, the first one of it was Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lainey Taylor. It's the third installment and conclusion to her Daughter, uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone series. And I have to say that I was a bit disappointed. I really enjoyed the first book and awarded it four stars. Um, the second book kind of dragged on in the beginning and I Mm, wasn't really sure but the ending was really satisfying and so I uh, I gave it like a 3.5 which I also rounded up to to be a 4 star read for me and I hope that that would also happen for this book as well but unfortunately that didn't happen. 
I won't go into too much detail here because it's like the final book of a series and you maybe haven't even started this series yet. All I want to say about it is like the first half uh, was really dragging on with not a lot happening in there and when things finally started to happen um, I was a bit disappointed with the whole structure because I had the feeling that the climax she um, worked towards was yeah really d resolved in a not that satisfying way and it was solved really early on and then she spent a lot of time I thought only with resolving the Romans aspect and when I was really frustrated with that within I think the last 15% of the book she introduced like a new threat at the end what you could have seen coming of course but wasn't much work toward maybe uh, as as the, the the first threat was and yeah then that was resolved and that felt really unnecessary um, I think if she really wanted to have ended the series with this and that this should yeah was her kind of climax to the series she should have built it up very differently throughout the the last two books so overall with a book that dragged for 50 percent and then had really strange structure choices in the end i only awarded two stars and last but not least i read the haunted man and the ghost spa game which is a christmas story by charles dickens I've read this for a Dickens read-along group uh, created by Samantha from Novels and Nonsense where we read like one of his Christmas stories each week uh, now uh, on our journey towards Christmas and this was the story we yeah, read in the last week of um, November and I was really disappointed by it. I really enjoyed the story we read in the, in the first week but this one um, had a lot of preachy conservative themes in it that I found really off-putting. Um, we have characters um, like, like there is a chemist and later on in the story there is a student and they are both bachelors uh, or single and I had the feeling that one of the morals of the book is that you can only really find happiness uh, within a family and if you have like people that that care for you in, in this kind of, of loving way than um, having a wife and, a, um, uh, and children and the, uh, the way this their singles were described there were actually a lot of they are causing harm to the people around them and they are in need of rescue um, uh, to yeah uh, to be brought into a family and that I think was really presumptuous and the overall moral of the book was that uh, you need to have misery in your life to be able to appreciate the good things and therefore you should come to some kind of acceptance of the misery and this is also something that I really find dangerous because it is like a I think elitist myth it's a kind of myth that you tell people in the lower classes who don't have that much or who have to live in misery uh, um, to put their life into a perspective and give them something yeah, to humble them like oh yeah all the misery you have in your life of course is needed because without it you wouldn't appreciate like the good things you have and uh, I think that is something that is rather used to put 
a lot of people that have way much less uh, into into their place um, and establish or protect the kind of divide between have and have not that we have in society. Um, and I'm personally not a fan of this kind of approach. I know that there are a lot of people that see merit in this kind of, um, um, of moral, but I have the feeling that this is more of a sociological way of repression um, that we do to ourselves um, to deal with the misery we have in our lives. And I found this to be a bit dishonest to be perfectly clear, yeah. Um, so, yeah, overall, with all this uh, uh, conservative moralism that was going on in the story, I really disliked it, and therefore I only awarded one star. So, that's it for my November wrap-up. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of me, subscribe to my channel. If you want to know what's coming up on my channel, for example, the uh, December TBR video that you're going to see tomorrow, look inside the description box. There's a little segment there called On the Horizon. I wish you a good day and hope you get bitten by a really good book too. Bye.